On this week's show, Constantine joins the Sandman universe, how to work at Shonen Jump, and our San Diego Comic Con giveaway. It's Previews World Weekly, and it's happening right now. What's up, Previews World? It's Wednesday, it's New Comic Book Day, which means it's time for Previews World Weekly. I'm one of your hosts, Troy Jeffrey Allen. And I'm Thea, and as usual, we're here every week to remind you guys to stop at a comic shop to get involved in what's happening in the world of comics. And if you like the show, or if you haven't seen the show and you end up liking the show, be sure to give us a like and a follow to keep the nerd news coming. And I'm glad that you mentioned if you haven't seen the show because San Diego Comic Con is this week, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to be we're, we have a bunch of exclusives that we do every year at San Diego Comic Con, yeah. 19 of them this year, and we're going to give you guys an opportunity to win those exclusives even if you aren't at the show. Yeah. If you are at the show, come by the booth and say hi. We'll have a presence there for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do want to point out that this contest basically is so you subscribe to the newsletter. Mm -hmm. So if you go to our website, previsworld.com. Sign up to the newsletter, you'll be instantly eligible to win. The contest is over July 24th, so definitely jump in on that now. And, you know, if, I mean, honestly, if you're at San Diego or you're not at San Diego, do it anyway. So, yeah. and yeah, and like you said, we'll keep the news nerd, new ner uh, nerd news coming. Ha -ha. There you go. <laughs> How do you do that every week? That's pretty I, crazy. I don't know. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> um, but we will be at booth 2401 at San Diego Comic Con, so definitely come by and say hi. And uh, we're going to treat this show like it's your first episode. So we're going to introduce you to everybody. We've already introduced you to Troy and Thea. Hi, guys. And uh, we're going to introduce you to the rest of the hosts that are featured on our YouTube channel like throughout the week. Uh, this is Previous World, so welcome. And uh, now let's just get it. Let's do what's at comic shops. Here's Anna Mia, one of our other hosts, and she's going to show you what's in stores this week. Hey, Previous World. Every week we give you the rundown of some of the books hitting the shelves for the first time. Here's what's at comic shops for the week of July 17th, 2019. Is that it? No way. Your comic shop has something for every type of customer. So stop at a comic shop today, and I'll see you back here next week. Thanks, Mia. And of course, that's just a little bit of what's available this week. If you want to see a rundown of what is all coming out, head on over to previewsworld.com slash new releases, and you can see a full list of titles. What you been looking at? Uh, so last week, I said I wanted to read The Lowest Lane, number one. Mm -hmm. And there's another book coming out this week that's mm -hmm. complementing that, which is Jimmy Olsen, number one. Nice. Um, these things are kind of loosely affiliated with Brian Michael Bendis' run of Superman, because he's pretty much doing the main book. Mm -hmm. But this one is Matt Fraction, uh, who, for me personally, did one of my favorite Iron Man runs. Cool. Um, and this is kind of him returning to superhero comics, because he's done a lot of stuff in Image. It's also Steve Lieber, who did the movie, well, did the movie. He did the comic, the graphic novel, White Out, which there was ultimately a Kate Beckinsale movie about that as mm -hmm. well but it's just really solid artwork nice. I've always just kind of always loved like finding out more about the Daily Planet like yeah. that's just something I've always latched on to I'm here for that like that was also always one of my favorite parts of the Superman movies right. like the Christopher Reeve ones I used to watch Lois and Clark because there was a lot of yeah you know like just Daily Aww. Planet stuff so yeah. right yeah you know <laughs> so um, definitely check that out I'm very curious to see what kind of uh, hijinks, mm -hmm. I think that's the best word for Jimmy Olsen, You're right. he's going to get into. Mm -hmm. And they promised that they're going to kill him in the end, which oh. I think is kind of interesting. <laughs> right. <It's> scandalo. <laughs> right, yeah, right. It's scandalo. I love that. <laughs> what are you looking forward to? Uh, I'm looking at Collapser. Okay, yeah. Which looks cool. This is a little mini series, so there will be six issues of this, and mm -hmm. it's from DC. And there's a voice in the head of Liam J James questioning everything he does, from his job at the nursing home to keeping his relationship with his girlfriend afloat. And of course, he suffers from anxiety. I feel that yeah. deep in my bones. I think we all do. As a human being. <laughs> and the only thing that helps him out is music. So he has a weekly DJ gig that mm -hmm. he deals with. And his life changes forever when he suddenly receives a black hole in the mail. Okay, all right, yeah. You know, as one does. I'm with this, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you just okay. get a black hole in the mail. Right. And it takes up residence in his chest um, and gives him superpowers. Interesting. So he has to sort of 
deal with the fallout of that, it turns him into a celebrity and draws him into this huge cosmic conflict, and huh. suddenly his life is blown completely out of proportion. Interesting. But conceptually, pretty darn cool. You know, I, I totally glossed over that. I didn't it's like, really neat. And that's the yeah. part of the Young Animals line. That's Gerard mm -hmm. Way and his crew, right? Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Yeah. I like that the, the idea of anxiety with the black hole in right? your chest. That's actually really smart. I like mm -hmm. that. All right, you, you sold me. I'm gonna have to check that out. <laughs> hey, <laughs> um, something else I'm looking forward to this week. Um, I've chosen this a couple of times. Infinity Eight, like it's. I thought it was like just a limited series, but like it's just continuing on, which I'm glad about because each three issues is a new set of characters. Oh, neat. And so like these are all vignettes about this downed space cruiser. Mm -hmm. Like you know, it's in, like in the middle of nowhere, stuck in an asteroid field, and you're kind of just. Me you're meeting all the different passengers. And all the different passengers have like these different like, you know, aspects of their personality, but also like are just just characters unto themselves as they should be. So you have spies, you have a flight attendant who gets like pulled into like this conspiracy. They just did one that just I like I still haven't caught up to this one yet. Mm -hmm. Um that was kind of like this black exploitation character on the ship. Like and of course there's aliens and like yeah. the aliens have different like racial conflicts with each other. Naturally. But every three st three issues is a different story. That's really cool. Right. And it's I a lot like of fun. That. Also I it just occurred to me actually it's all an all female cast. Like I mean well all the main all the protagonists are female. Cool. Oh, yeah, I just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> so extra cool. I, yeah, definitely checked out. It's French. It's been a, it's being a, it's being adapted to English, mm -hmm. uh, courtesy of Magnetic Collection. And it's just been a fun book. Awesome. Like it's just like one of those things. Like I you, like the idea of those little like. Yeah. Like well, I like the the one that was the crime one, where each one is a different, each mm -hmm. issue is a different. But I like that they have three issues. Right. right. Yeah. 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 Like so you get like a nice little arc. Bit more, right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So it's just a fun fun sci-fi book, kind of like you know they. They play up some of the camp and like, yeah, it's just a good one. So Pretty cool. What else are you looking forward to? Outpost Zero. Okay. Uh -huh. So we're on to issue 11 right now and this is from Image, but it's a really cool concept again that, that we've got some people who work the land and they go to the fights every night and they tuck their children into bed. But the outpost is no dream, no place for dreams or aspirations. It's a very like, we're surviving out here. This is a, a hostile environment for humanity mm -hmm. to be in. And there's a character named Aaliyah, and they realize that there's something going on in the world that they inhabit. Okay. It's a frozen landscape, too. It's like the tundra. Uh, okay. right? So they're, they're basically struggling to survive, and now they're going to have to survive against something else. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, I like how like vague and mysterious it mm -hmm, is, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, just That's a fun one. right like, up yeah. my alley, right? Like, <laughs> I like it also. Survival tales are always mm -hmm. fun to read, especially when it's like, you know, against the elements. But they're adding an actual uh, something else something. on top of that. Mm -hmm. So that's always fun. Actually, it reminds me of uh, The Thing. Yeah. A little bit. That's you know? a good call. So mm -hmm. there you go. For sure. Um, what else can, so those were our picks, but yeah. what else can people look forward to this week? So also out is Vampirella number one, mm -hmm. and this is the 1969 replica. Oh, okay. So it's really cool. Uh -huh. It's not like a new line, so it's basically going back and taking a look at Vampirella from the start. Okay, okay. So it, she started as a horror comic hostess, right, right as yeah. we know, and then she went through about 50 years of story evolution to become who she is now. Mm -hmm. Right, and we've got her 50th anniversary happening. Right, currently. Yep. So this is a limited edition of Vampir Vampirella number one. It's magazine size, 66 page collection oh, okay. of the daughter of Draculons. <laughs> First time in print, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it includes every story and even the ads okay. as they appear. So it's a facsimile too on top yeah, of it. Yeah, nice. okay. absolutely. So it's like straight up replica. Huh. Yeah, it's okay. really cool. It features a diverse range of masters. We got Neil Adams and Reed Crandall <laughs> and Jack Kirby, of course. Right, yeah. Um, or sorry, the Jack Kirby inker Mike Royer. Oh, okay. So, and then mm -hmm. uh, Tom Sutton, Ernie Colon, and Tony Tellerico. Nice. Yeah. And a Frazetta cover. If and I a Frazetta correctly. cover. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. fancy. We have Frazetta coasters. We do. <laughs> <laughs> you right. You right. right. But this conceptually, I think, is really cool. So you get to see where Vampirella started out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I told you. Like, I we talked about this. I think off camera. I don't think we talked on our camera too. Like. We did, uh, you should actually check out Mia's uh, Vampirella video, because mm -hmm. she did like a Know Your Heroes video where yep. she kind of talks about all the major creators that have floated into Vampirella's life <laughs> over the course of these 50 Absolutely. years. And it just so happens that the most recent is Christopher Priest, who yep. everyone knows from Black Panther. Like, he's he defined Black Panther for like, pretty much now. Yeah. You know? And um, so the number one, this is one of many number ones. Mm -hmm. So if you had the facsimile edition, which is what this 1969 version mm -hmm. is, but the actual number one, for the new Christopher Priest series is also out on top yes. of that. Yes. So definitely keep an eye out for right. that. Um, something else that people should look out forward to, look forward to is um, Blade Runner number one from yeah. Titan Comics. Like we were both admiring 
the cover, because I think it's the Stanley Art Gem cover mm -hmm. that was the cover of our previous catalog a few months back. Yep. And like this one is actually pretty interesting because like the Blade Runner movies take place in 2019. Or the first movie took place in 2019, yes. I should say. Yes. And so, like, they're really playing off of that for this year. Sure. And on top of that, it's interesting because it's coming from Michael Golden, who actually wrote the screenplay for 2049, Blade Runner 2049, and it's an ongoing. So, I mean, it's just, it's really curious to see where they're going to go with this, because this is one of those things that, like, there's a, oh, man, I always forget, there's a Netflix show that reminded me of what Blade Runner would be like on a regular basis, and I can't remember what it was called. But the point is, like, I've always been interested in, like, an episodic Blade Runner. Like, yeah. I've always been interested in the idea of, like, someone hunting down replicants. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, mm -hmm. that, just that, that general premise. And the movies have always played with that, but sure. that's not really what the movies are about. No. So... Yeah, check that out. It's from Titan Comics. That's it's out this week. I like it. Um, speaking of non-U.S. comics, because Titan is actually not a U.S. Uh, company, um, Humanoids. Uh, we've been covering them quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. Um, they have a new line called H1, and it just so happens that uh, at the top of that company, or at the top of this publisher uh, doing this H1 line, is Mark Wade, who we interviewed, mm -hmm. and John Cassidy, who turns out we interviewed as well. Uh -huh. um, so we did like a little previews world. Uh, you know, Skype interview with him. That'll be available very soon. And actually, we're going to show you a little clip from the interview. But uh, I got to ask him about everything because I want to ask him about his career. Like, John Cassidy is one of those guys, like, he creates iconic images. Absolutely. Like, he did Astonishing X-Men with Josh Sweden. He did mm -hmm. Planetary with Warren Ellis. He did Captain America, like, uh, with John A. Ryber. Like, all these big, people. Big, stuff. Yeah, like, big, big stuff. And now he's the creative director for Humanoid. So here's a little snippet of that interview, and then when we come back, we'll show you some more stuff that we're looking forward to. Check it out. So uh, we talked, you talked earlier about Batman and how that was, like, you know, one of the characters that you drew a lot as a kid. But, like, in, as an adult, what is your favorite character, character to draw? Like, is there one that you just always gravitate towards? There are two. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be a little cryptic here. One is, I want is Captain America. He's, he's, he's my favorite. Okay, um, nice. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've been fortunate enough to, to, to take the reins on him a few times. And the other is a character that no one has seen yet that is my thing that I'm working on now. And so okay. I've, I've, I've become that guy who is working on something that I can't talk about. Just <laughs> I mean, your Captain America is like painstakingly detailed. Like uh, we were—it's funny actually. Our one of our co-hosts is a cosplayer, and like she mentioned, like the having to put together scales on like things, and like it was funny because I remember your Captain America, and, like how every little scale on his costume was drawn to, like to detail. Like it's just amazing. People talk. People talk. I see people talking about it. You know, as if you know. You know I mean, he was there before. It, mm -hmm. It's always been there. I mean, You're right. you know, it's just on the degree of, of, of how far you want to go with it but yeah i mean sorry it was, it was there before i didn't I, it's not it's not my creation right right no and like yeah of course but like at the same time <laughs> so like for it all, just... all the artists that came after me doing cat they're like damn you like no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> right like you set the bar at a certain level and now everybody but you're like that's not my fault like it was always there <laughs> And again, that's just a clip from our John Cassidy interview. Be sure to tune in on Thursday. Um, we're going to also be giving away a bunch of stuff, including stuff from, well, primarily stuff from Humanoids and only stuff from Humanoids. Yeah. But definitely check out, uh, you'll have a chance to get the uh, free comic book day edition of H1 Ignition. Hopefully I'll get a better copy for it because it's been beat up. Um, but also part of it, also from Humanoids, Sanctum Redux. Big boy. And uh, Screaming Planet because... You might recognize humanoids primarily for the stuff with Jodorowsky. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give you two books by uh, Jodorowsky on top of that. So Fancy. definitely check that out. Um, and it's Thursday. so. Yeah. But now we're going to do something we do every week. <laughs> Thea is going to tell you all about the news in the world of comics from the last seven days. Here's our new segment. And then we're going to chime in with some little bits about what we think about it and hopefully uh, get you excited for things coming to your comic shop in the future. Here we go. <laughs> Marvel Comics is calling on a slew of street-level heroes to tackle Contagion, a five-issue limited series written by Ed Brisson and a whole team of artists, Roge Antonio, Steven Segovia, Mac Chater, Damian Cucciero, and Adam Gorham. Contagion will hit comic book shops in October for a five-week run featuring New York's own Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Thing, Iron Fist, Moon Knight, and more to take on a horrifying new threat that has never been seen by the Marvel Universe. This is a situation that only folks like Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Ben Grimm, Cloak and & Dagger, and about a half dozen street-level folks can solve. 
The Avengers try to get involved, but for reasons the readers will quickly learn, their involvement can be incredibly catastrophic. It could spell the end of New York, and maybe even the end of the world. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, actually, I like, yeah, that's another one. I didn't really get a chance to look at that. Mm -hmm. and that's pretty interesting. It's a actually. cool concept. Yeah, people like Ed Bryson, so like that's actually a really fun one. Mm -hmm. Not getting the Avengers involved, all the street level heroes. Yeah, just raise the stakes a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, also, this should not be confused with the Marvel Zombies book that they right. announced right on the hills of Walking Dead, getting right. <laughs> getting axed. <laughs> not axed, but get axed. But Already missing the zombies. Have right. some zombies. Have some zombies. <laughs> right. So yeah, this is a completely different book. There's a Marvel Zombies book coming, yes. but Contagion is a completely different yes. thing. So just definitely check that out. Word. Also, I'm going to point out. That's it. Uh, there's, there's just DC from here on. That's true. <laughs> right? Like I, DC heavy. DC but they heavy. have a lot of great announcements. They so. do. I think that might be partially because of San Diego. I think Fair enough. Marvel's got some certain things lined up. DC has certain things lined up. Of they course. wanted to get this stuff out of the week the week, mm -hmm. week before. So mm -hmm. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Strap in. Fans can't seem to stop talking about the upcoming Legion of Superheroes Millennium miniseries launching in September. So DC figured there's no reason to stop the conversation. Here's a sneak peek at some new art from issue number two. In addition to this great art, check out the cover to issue number two of Legion of Superheroes Millennium by Ryan Sook, where a certain superhero gets his Legion flight ring. But wait, there's more! With the debut of an all-new Legion of Superheroes ongoing series by Bendis and Sook in November, here's a look at more of the Legion membership in the form of new character designs by Ryan Sook. Between these designs and the cover to Legion of Superheroes Millennium number two, there's plenty to talk about. Not just new costumes, but new characters too? Let the speculation begin. Legion of Superheroes Millennium number one goes on sale September 4th, while Legion of Superheroes Millennium number two will be available October 7th, 2nd. There you go. No, it's, that's not even hype what they're saying. I'm yeah. like at the, at the forefront of that, like, you know, that release, like, People really are excited yeah. for this Legion of Superhero thing. Like, and I mean, I'm just genuinely glad to see people genuinely excited for something hitting comic shops. Yes. Between this and the Hickman X-Men run for sure. that's coming up, people are just like, I want this, I want yeah. this. So yeah, awesome, I love mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Go for the it, guys. The hype is real. The hype is real. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, DC announced that acclaimed director, screenwriter, and producer John Carpenter and Anthony Birch, writer of the hit video games Borderlands 2 and League of Legends, will make their DC Universe debut in a one-shot comic as part of the publisher's Year of the Villain event in The Joker, Year of the Villain number one, on sale October 9th. While this one-shot is the first time that Carpenter and Birch will be writing a DC story, they're no strangers to collaborating on comic books that tell big, over-the-top, and bombastic tales, having previously co-written Boom Studios' Big Trouble in Little China, Old Man Jack miniseries. The Joker, Year of the Villain, a 40-page one-shot, debuts in comic book stores on Wednesday, October 9th. John Carpenter, he's had like a, a revival lately, which is actually pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm actually very curious to see him tackle the DC Universe. For sure. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Also, shout out to Birch. Like, I, we were talking about this before, like, he did uh, Hey Ash, What You're Playing, yeah. which was actually one of my favorite things on YouTube yes. a few years ago. Me so, too. <laughs> and like, yeah, he did the Big Trouble in Little China series and a mm -hmm. bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. I saw Johnny, our engineer over here, nodding his head yes. when you mentioned the Big Trouble book because it's a fan phrase, <laughs> Old Man stuff. Jack. So, Absolutely. yeah, definitely check it out. For sure. So, what else we got from DC? Because we're just going for it. That's very true. Last <laughs> but not least, last year DC launched the Sandman Universe, a series of books curated by legendary author Neil Gaiman, bringing in new creative voices to expand the mythos of the dreaming. DC has now announced a new addition to this universe starring the infamous John Constantine. It all begins October 30th with a special one-shot issue. The Sandman Universe presents Hellblazer No. 1 from writer Simon Spurrier and artist Marcio Takara, followed by the ongoing series John Constantine Hellblazer from Spurrier and artist Aaron Campbell this November. Following the special issue, Spurrier and Campbell will continue Constantine's story in the pages of John Constantine Hellblazer, available November 27th. November will also kick off new arcs in The Dreaming, Books of Magic, Lucifer, and House of Whispers. The first collected editions of The Dreaming, House of Whispers, Lucifer, and Books of Magic are available in comic shops everywhere this month. I like that that's a one-shot. Yes. Like, I like it's a one-shot, and it's kicking off a new series mm -hmm. for John Constantine Hellblazer. Also, I want to point out, it's called John Constantine Hellblazer, because mm -hmm. like, I remember people were a little salty when they changed the title of the book and like went into the regular DC Universe, right. so it might be a little edgy, you don't know, we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll find out. That's cool. Anything um, Sandman Universe I'm here for, as Yeah, pretty know. much. I mean, like, I'm, and I'm the same way about Constantine. I'll read anything Constantine. Same. Like, he's just got a great track record of like great writers. For sure. Um, also, I want to point out, it's interesting because he, they just did Batman Damned, mm -hmm. and like he met Batman, mm -hmm. now he's reading, meeting Sandman, mm -hmm. so you know, there's still, him coming into the DC Universe, I know 
know a lot of people are upset about it at yeah. first, but it's not really a bad thing. That's it can be, be fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now we're going to introduce you guys to one of our other hosts. This is Natasha, and she does uh, Previews World's Toy Chest every single week. And she's going to show you what's on the toy section of your local comic shop. And then when we come back, we'll talk about some of the things that we thought were cool. Check it out. Hey Previews World, Natasha here to give you a look inside the Previews Toy Chest. Let's find out what's at comic shops for the week of July 17, 2019. Want to see more? Be sure to check out Talking Toys, our weekly show that spotlights new collectibles on their way to your friendly local comic shop. Just head over to previewsworld.com slash talking toys to find out more. Thanks, Natasha. And you can catch Natasha on Talking Toys. She also hosts our uh, monthly series, Indie Edge, where she just talks about, like, all the small press comics available now. But if you're looking for more toys, head over to previewsworld.com slash toy chess, and you can discover stuff upcoming, stuff that's currently available at your local comic shop, all that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. Previews World literally is your, like, hub for everything at your local comic book Absolutely. store. Uh, so, I gotta ask. I thought, we, I, like, you were gushing over the, uh, the Zulu, Zulu? Zulu, yeah. Uh, the, the Artist Alley uh, uh -huh. DC Gallery they're ones. They're so adorable. Those are good ones, And yeah. they're really good little character designs. They too. are, no, they're yeah, such yeah. Solid, very solid. I'm always impressed by, like, redesigns, because, like, they can either go really south. Right. <laughs> right, you know, or just, like, be just right. And these yeah. are actually really nice. They're really good. The style is really nice. The DC Artist Alley line is actually a lot of fun. Like, it's actually really cool redesigns from a bunch of different artists. Right. All smaller artists, independent artists, yes. whatever, you know, so. All super yeah. stylized. All super so stylized, I love yeah. that about them. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is actually really cool. Yeah. Um, I do want to point out that normally this is when we would do a toy giveaway. That's true. But we have another giveaway we're going to do, because the Overstreet Price Guide was released this week actually released today and uh, it pretty much gives you everything you need to know about like what your collection's worth mm -hmm. but we're going to do that at the end of the show so sorry no toy giveaway this time but we'll be back next week with another to toy giveaway more than likely um, so but first we're going to you, kick it over to Gretchen mm -hmm. now Gretchen's another one of our hosts and she does our top 10 every month where she tells you about the best sellers from the previous month so check this out this is what you were reading in June Hey Previews World, Gretchen here with a look at the top selling comics of June 2019. Let's take a look at what you were reading last month. Kicking things off at number 10 is Batman issue number 72. Batman number 73 is on its heels at number 9. At number 8, The Walking Dead shambles towards a finale with Walking Dead number 192. Immortal Hulk number 19 is at number 7. Nick Spencer and Ryan Oatley's Amazing Spider-Man issue number 24 arrives at number 6. At number 5 is The Batman Who Laughs, issue number 6. At number 4, Brian Azzarello and Lee Bermejo's Batman Damned, issue number 3 concludes its run. Silver Surfer Black, issue number 1, soars in at number 3. Deceased, number 2, infects the number 2 slot. And finally, Marvel's Black Cat, issue number one, pulls the ultimate heist by stealing the number one spot. So did you pick up these issues? Let us know in the comments below. And you can discover our full list of top 100 sellers from June. Simply head on over to previewsworld.com.
Well, we showed you first the top 10 uh, from like June. But then on top of that, we also showed you the trailer for Vampirella, which mm -hmm. is out right now. We mentioned that earlier. Um, a bunch of really cool variant covers. Absolutely. One of them's Frank Cho, one of them's Alex Ross. But also, I just want to point out that Dynamite has said this before. This was one. Of, this was their best-selling title of all time. This mm -hmm. number one, like it just like broke records for them. Bam. So like, yeah, a lot of you are looking forward to it. And if you haven't picked it up, you might want to check it out because it's definitely something that people are buzzing about. The time is now. Um, so now we're going to reintroduce you to one of our other hosts, uh, Anamia, who opened our What's a Comic Shop se uh, segment earlier in the show. Also does. Oh, well, she does Know Your Heroes. Mm -hmm. Actually, we all do Know Your Heroes mm -hmm. at some point in time. Yeah. Thea's done a Hellboy one. Um, but on top of that, she does a series every month called Mangapedia. And we just started this one in, like, the previous months we did uh, just, like, what is manga, for those of you who aren't familiar. But now we're going to show you guys one that's about how Shonen Jump operates. Mm -hmm. Shonen Jump is actually a staple of the publishing world, especially in the world of comics and especially in the world of manga. And Anime is going to dive more into that, so definitely check this out. Hey Previews World, and welcome back to the Mangapedia, our ongoing exploration of Japanese comics. If you're an aficionado or entirely new to manga, you'll want to tune in. You might discover something new. But also, if you pay close attention, you could win a manga bundle on us. So what's this month's topic? Well, it's Shonen Jump. If you've ever heard of Dragon Ball or Yu-Gi-Oh, then you've probably heard of Weekly Shonen Jump. Launched in 1968, the iconic Shonen Jump stands out from the various magazines that serialize manga in Japan largely because of its role in the creative process. Let's start from the beginning. Just like the Western world of comics, manga creators are aspiring storytellers who dream of breaking through. But before that breakthrough hit turns a wannabe into the next possible Akira Toriyama, a manga editor in Japan is responsible for discovering an ambitious new talent. That's where Weekly Shonen Jump comes in. There are three ways in which Shonen Jump editors discover manga creators. One, through contests held by the magazine's staff. Two, walk-in meetings with the editors, or three, by finding new talents working as assistants to establish mangaka already being published in Shonen Jump. By the way, mangaka is the Japanese term for a manga artist. If you've taken one of these three avenues, then you can expect a Shonen Jump editor to guide you, provide you with illustrative feedback, and to help you develop your story. Once your tale has been outlined, you'll start putting together concept sketches with an editor. Next up, a manga cut will draw three full-length chapters of what will hopefully become a series. The final step in this process is probably the hardest. You'll be judged by the Serialization Committee. Every issue of Weekly Shonen Jump includes a survey postcard in which readers select their three favorite series from a given issue. Based on the results of these surveys, the manga in the magazine will continue or end. Some of the series that have continued on through Weekly Shonen Jump, Naruto, Death Note, One Piece, and My Hero Academia. Like I said, Weekly Shonen Jump is iconic and has produced more than a few icons in the process. Did you catch all that? I certainly hope so, because now it's time to win. Comment below and tell us how often Weekly Shonen Jump is released. That's an easy one, right? Good luck and be sure to follow Previews World for more Mangapedia and more chances to win. And thanks, Anamia. And Anamia, actually, I want to give her a little shout out. She's going to be at the Aspen booth during San Diego Comic Con. Absolutely. And we might try to trick her into doing like a few of uh, a few segments with us. Like uh, we were toying around with the idea of comics at Comic Con. Hopefully, we get a chance sure. to do that because that'd be a lot of fun. Absolutely. So yeah. San Diego, man. Yeah. So I know that we do a lot of content surrounding San Diego. We've got a lot of videos. We're going to do a lot of interviews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you actually get to enjoy yourself there? You know, it's. You know, I don't want to throw shade on other cons, <laughs> but it does help that the weather is nice. You know, I don't really see a lot of celebrities. I see a lot of celebrities when I'm at New York. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, I don't think I've seen a lot at San Diego. Or made the effort to go see? Um, I mean, you know, it's kind of effortless at New York. Like, mm -hmm. everything's just so compact there mm -hmm. that you will bump into somebody <laughs> that you know Fair from enough. TV or movies. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so, but I say that because, like, but it's, I don't need those things to, yeah. like, kind of enjoy it. Like, it's, it's all about, like, you know, we get to interview creators, mm -hmm. get some insight into their process. Mm -hmm. So that's about as much celebrity sighting as I need, personally. Fair enough, yeah. Now, if I get to go to Hall H and see this Marvel panel, I won't complain about it. I'm just saying, <laughs> but we—I I, I recommend it to everybody if they can do it. Like nice. I took me years to go, yeah. but I—you I, should go. Oh. You know, okay. I'm just all right. I, I, I'm not, not talking <laughs> to you, the average viewer, but like you know, the powers that be. <laughs> this one right here. Maybe she should go to San Diego too. I'm just saying, um, but. Uh, we have a, a Overstreet Price Guide mm -hmm. that gets released every month. Yeah. I'm sorry, every year. Yes. And it drops around the same time at San Diego Comic Con. Uh -huh. And uh, I mentioned earlier, it's pretty much the official tome mm -hmm. for how you price comic books. Mm -hmm. So, would you like to win those? 
We got two of them. We do. So you got two chances to win. <laughs> they're big. They're heavy. <laughs> yeah, they are. That took effort. I'm not kidding. They are tomes. They are tomes. They are very tomy. Mm -hmm. Very large. Yeah. Big boys. Mm -hmm. So we have two. So we get two winners. Yeah. And we want you guys to comment wherever you're watching us and let us know what the most valuable comic in your collection is. Nice. And you could win. Yeah, there you go. Doot, doot. And I know everybody has a gem. I also want to point out, it could be like, you know, you just have a sentimental attachment yeah, to it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be price. Right, it doesn't have to be price. It's just something that means a lot to you. Like if, if given a chance to part with your collection, what's the thing that you would hold on to? Mm -hmm. You know, that's one way of looking at it. Absolutely. Also, I think this is uh, celebrating the Joker's anniversary. Sure looks um, like For next year, so <laughs> there you go. How about that? Mm -hmm. um, Normally we do social swamp. We didn't do a social swamp this week. That's yeah. normally where we let you guys chime in on like, you know, events happening in the comic world. We had like some feedback about Walking Dead. We did a Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe before that. Yeah. Social Swamp will probably be back next week. Cool. Um, but that's it for us. Yeah. We do have this one other thing that we do every month, yes. every week. Absolutely. And what is Every that? week. We have the comic shop shout out. So yeah. if you guys want to have your favorite local comic shop featured on the show, hit us up on social media, wherever you can find us. Use the hashtag SupportYourLCS. Let us know what your favorite local comic shop is, and you could be featured. And this week, we're going to leave you with photos of Android's amazing comics in Seville, New York, sent in by Jessica Ann. Cool. And uh, again, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome to Previews World. Uh, I do want to point out that we are online everywhere as at Previews World. And also, I actually should point out, for the 19 Comic Con exclusive, the giveaway we're doing, again, just go to the front page. There's a little box in the right-hand corner that says, subscribe to our newsletter. Just plug your email in there, and you'll be eligible to win. Um, on that note, that's it for us. I've been Troy Jeffrey Allen. And I'm Thea, and we'll see you at the Spinner Rack. watching Previews World Weekly. If you like the show, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future episodes.